it's Sarah the Tudor Travel Guide here and welcome to the Tudor Travel Guide on the road and today I'm here at the dramatic Bolton Castle in the heart of the Wensleydale countryside and I'm here to tell you the story of Mary Queen of Scots who of course was imprisoned here in the castle for a short period of time in 1568 but of course the journey that brought Mary here began before that the year before 1567 had been a horrendous year for Mary in which her her lords had revolted her husband had been murdered she had been forced to abdicate and finally taken prisoner Mary landed at Workington in May 1568 and she was immediately taken into protective custody by English forces initially ostensibly as a guest but of course it would soon become clear that Mary was more a prisoner than a guest. Having stayed at Carlisle for a couple of months, she was transferred here to Bolton Castle, where she was to reside for the next six months before taking the next step of a very, very long journey, which ultimately would end up on the scaffold at Fotheringhay. brought deeper into English territory from Carlisle Castle. She was brought here to Bolton Castle in Wensleydale in North Yorkshire. Now this is a rugged and romantic spot but it's also very isolated which was exactly what Mary's jailers were looking for for it would be her home or should I say prison for the next six months. So Mary was brought here to Bolton Castle on the 15th of July 1568. There are records of her arriving here just one or two hours after sunset, in which case we can imagine the cavalcade snaking its way up to the castle by flickering torchlight. Mary progressing here through the main entrance to this foreboding building with its high walls and angular lines. This was to be her new home for the next six months. was built at the end of the 14th century by its very wealthy owner at enormous cost. It was highly innovative in design at the time. Gone were the Mott and Bailey castles of old where a central tower sat upon a mound and then an outer bailey encircled various offices and buildings. No, no, no. Here at Bolton Castle, the own designed a building in which suites of rooms for his family and guests were interconnected within the walls of, ca of the castle, including offices for the running of the castle and even stabling for his horses on the ground floor. Now, by the time Mary arrived here some 200 years later, of course, fashions had moved on and Bolton Castle was no longer innovative and fashionable in its design. However, Lord Scrope of Bolton, who owned Bolton Castle at the time, lived comfortably here with his wife. And it was here 
in the southwest corner of the tower behind me that Mary occupied Lord Scrope and Lady Scrope's chambers while she was here imprisoned within the castle. <laughs> Lord Scrope of Bolton owned the castle here. It was actually Sir Francis Knollys who was dispatched from London to be the Queen of Scots guardian and jailer. And he wrote back his first impressions about Mary as someone who was bold, who was fair, who spoke much, but most of all as somebody who wished to be avenged of her enemy. And what she desired most was victory. And while Sir Francis Knollys passed time here with Mary, helping her to learn to read and write in English, there's no doubt that miles away, back in London, the Tudor court had begun its machinations against the Catholic Scottish Queen, and that Mary was become ever more ensnared in the maze of English politics. staying at Bolton Castle, this room, the Solar, would have been one of the chambers in which she spent most of her time. It was here that she would live on a day-to-day -day basis with her ladies and, of course, Lady Scrope of Bolton, whom she became great friends with. Right in front of the roaring fire, we might imagine Mary talking with Lady Scrope, writing letters and doing the embroidery for which she became most accomplished. chamber. She took over the chamber of Lady Scrope while she was in residence here at the castle and so here she would have slept and perhaps it was here that one of her ladies did her hair famously with a new device every day. During Mary's time here at Bolton, she was given quite a lot of freedom. She certainly wasn't confined to within the castle. In fact, under supervision, she was allowed to hunt 
in the woodland that surrounded the castle and surely that must have brought great joy to the Scottish Queen. But it's amazing to think that as I stand here in her bedchamber looking out of this window across the Wensleydale Valley I'm looking at exactly the same view that Mary once enjoyed or perhaps wondered about whether she would actually ever truly be free. While Mary was being held prisoner at Bolton Castle, she was allowed out to hunt under supervision. Now, legend has it that on one day she escaped from her jailers and she fled across the Wensleydale countryside. And as she did so, a piece of her shawl got caught in the nearby vegetation. Now, whether that legend is true or not, we don't know. But today, a piece of track that connects Bolton Castle to the nearby market town of Leyburn is still called the Shawl in honour of Mary, Queen of Scots. months of imprisonment here at Bolton Castle, a dramatic six months in which Mary was tried by the courts in York in her absence for her potential involvement and guilt in the murder of her second husband, Lord Darnley. It was decided in London that it would be safer to move the Queen deeper into the heart of England and so she would be transferred into the care of the Earl of Shrewsbury and the formidable Bess of Hardwick. And so Mary finally left Bolton Castle. She stayed here for only a relatively short period of time, six months, in an imprisonment that lasted nearly 18 years. But surely it was a time in which she believed that her cousin Elizabeth might help her regain the throne, and maybe also a time in which she understood that she was no longer guest, but Elizabeth's prisoner. That's all from our time here at Bolton Castle today on this very <laughs> blustery September day. I hope you've enjoyed our story about Mary Queen of Scots' time here at the castle. And if you want to read more, I'll put a link to the blog article I wrote about Mary Queen of Scots in the associated text and bio. But for now, it's Sarah, the Tudor Travel Guide. Make sure that you subscribe to the blog at www.thetudortravelguide.com to keep up with all my latest adventures.